Big sequels, a highly anticipated fantasy adventure, and some booty kicking are all here for February 2022. And indies, remasters, and AAAs are all here. But man, is it a fire month for sequels. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. Listed by release date here, February 2022's top 10 video games you should keep an eye on. First up is Life is Str coming out on February 1st for last gen and this gen consoles as well as PC. This is a remaster of the BAFTA award winning game originally debuting in 2015. An adventure puzzle game that allows players to control Max Caulfield, a photography student at a prestigious high school located in the fictional sleepy Pacific Northwest town of Arcadia Bay. Max Soon learns that she can rewind time and must use her power to save her best friend Chloe from a violent altercation. The pair then find themselves investigating the disappearance of a local girl, Amber, uncovering a much darker side to the town. Now with the remastered collection, there are improvements to the visuals, the engine, the puzzles, as well as the lighting. The developer Don't Nod has also improved animations with mocap technology. One of the biggest criticisms of the original game was the poor animation and lip syncing, so it's nice to see the developers tackle this in the remaster. If you're a fan of casual story driven games then this is an absolute must play. It's fantastic and there's a reason why in 2015 it was a sleeper hit and why it won over 75 game of the year awards. I don't typically endorse a lot of remasters which you can find out why by checking out my why PC ports are so bad video right here. But check reviews once it's released to see if it made any significant improvements to the game. My guess since it got delayed so much that it probably made improvements especially after this whole GTA fiasco. The first major release of February is another sequel to another 2015 game, Dying Light. Dying Light 2 Stay Human is coming out on February 4th for the last gen, this gen consoles, and PC. And again, it's a survival horror action RPG about a zombie apocalypse. And taking place 20 years after the original game, humanity is still on the verge of total annihilation. There's a straight up global dark age. And in Europe, the city is one of the last large human settlements around, but it's torn by tons of conflict between humans, their factions, and the hordes of zombies just plaguing the city. Players take control of Aiden Caldwell, who has unique powers from the virus. Players will use Aiden to help change the fate of the city by uncovering its dark secrets and aligning himself with its various factions. Expect the sequel to continue with more slick parkour movements and more brutal melees that the series is known for. Stay Human will give players an even larger map about four times the original size and provide them with over 500 hours of gameplay. Like, is this an MMO? The time cost on this is wild. And when the developers Techland reported this, it made a lot of headlines and started discussions about the trend of long-form games. You will be seeing a lot of this game in the next coming weeks, but expect some of these other bigger games to take over a little bit of its reign. February is such a huge release month, like we haven't even scratched the surface. All right, so the next big and interesting indie release is Ali Ali World coming February 8th for last gen, this gen, the Switch and PC. This is the third in the skateboarding series and the sequel to 2015's Ali Ali 2 Welcome to Hollywood. I love that title by the way. Ali Ali World puts players into the vibrant world of Radlandia where they can skate their way to the top, meeting colorful characters, completing side quests, and customizing their character. Now Ali Ali World is a 2D platformer and with a new art style moving away from pixels, Ali Ali is given a new wild personality. This style is a big departure from their previous games. But to make the game and Radlandia vibrant and unique, Unique, developers looked at the Jet Set Radio franchise as well as comic books to get their new visual style down. The art style may dissuade longtime fans, but it's bursting with personality. So Ali Ali World will bring in a lot of appeal for fans of skateboarding games, extreme sports games, or even just fun platformers. And honestly, just from the Jet Set Radio reference, it's kind of a must buy for me. This is definitely an indie game to look out for. The next game on the list is Sifu from French developer Slow Clap. They are makers of 2017's Absolver. And it's coming to PlayStation 4 and PC via the Epic Games Store on February 8th. Players take control of a young kung fu student on a mission to avenge his family members who were brutally murdered. Taking place in an unnamed contemporary Chinese city, Sifu pits players against countless number of enemies to kung fu through. Uh, but if you die, you age a couple years. And when you age up in the game, it gives you less health, but it makes your moves hit harder due to a magical talisman. It basically looks and acts like an indie game, 
but the developers aren't really that indie. The art style is simple and muted, reminiscent of Absolver. If you're a fan of any fighting or beat em up style of games, you will be interested to see how this does with reviews. Keep it on the list for a short and smooth fighting experience. The next game is an indie casual adventure game called Know By Heart. It's coming to the PC only on February 10th. And ooh, this game is gonna be an emotional roller coaster just like Life is Strange. The game takes place in a small Russian town after the fall of the Soviet Union, where players take control of Misha. Misha, living in a mundane life, is given hope after a childhood friend returns to town. And through an interwoven narrative with mini games, players in Misha will learn to accept loss and the inevitability of growing up. Memories and flashbacks will immerse players into the life of Misha, allowing this game to definitely tug at your heart. Any fans of casual games like Firewatch or What Remains of Edia Finch should be on the lookout for this one. And I personally vibe with a lot of melancholy-ish games, so I'm definitely keeping my eye on this one. Like, she gonna f me up with some tears. 2022's first big shooters here, it's Crossfire. It's a massive, massive, massive franchise in China and South Korea. And it's coming to console for the first time on February 10th for the Xbox. This is the first console console game of the franchise and it's being developed by Remedy, makers of the iconic Alan Wake and more notably 2019's Control. But Remedy is only working on the single player campaign, the original developers of Crossfire Smilegate will be working on the multiplayer modes. Players are returning to the epic blacklist versus global risk mercenary conflict. The game is definitely competing one to one with Call of Duty and hopefully this ends up being a big win for Microsoft and Xbox. So if you love military first person shooter sims, definitely be on the lookout for this. And along with Microsoft's insane acquisitions over the last couple years in the video game industry, Crossfire X will likely sell like hotcakes. And this could also be a good time to ship subscriptions for Xbox Game Pass if they choose to go that route. The biggest strategy game of the year is hitting us on February 17th with Total War Warhammer 3 and that's coming to the PC. This is the third installment of the Warhammer series and will again be a mix of turn-based strategy and real-time strategy tactics. And will include a campaign map that is two times the size of the one in 2017's Warhammer 2. In Warhammer 3, players will be taken to the Realm of Chaos. The Realm of Chaos is the origin of magic in the Warhammer fantasy series, so y'all know it's gonna pop off. Players have access to six races and with an optional seventh if you pre-order. So with it, imagine a fun campaign, imagine fun action, fun races, insane units, and just a whole lot of Warhammer. And if you love high fantasy, this is gonna be a great game for you. And it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up to the previous ones since Creative Assembly, the developers, have been a little hush hush on it, so keep on the lookout for that. And oh my god, one of the biggest releases of the year is already here. Alloy is gracing us again on February 18th with Horizon Forbidden West for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, a sequel to the iconic PlayStation exclusive Horizon Zero Dawn that came out in 2017. In this action adventure RPG, players will return as Alloy to fight more cool and crazy machines on this post apocalyptic world of Horizon. And the game takes place in the western US. Players will explore a much larger open world map that covers parts of California, Nevada, and Utah. Players will be able to climb freely around ruins and swim underwater for the first time, exploring the world's seas, lakes, and rivers. The Lazophobia incoming, I'm literally freaking out already. Expect the graphics to be a 10 out of 10, expect the action to be a 10 out of 10, expect the environments to be a 10 out of 10. If you are a PlayStation owner, you will definitely be looking at buying and playing this game. And if you haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn yet, literally what are you doing? Go play it. It's a top PlayStation game and you will need to play it in order to understand the narrative for this one. Oh, and if you're enjoying this list so far, consider parking it on that like button and parking it on that subscribe button. I will be releasing more top 10 previews at the end of each month, but I also have other video game news and commentary videos for you to check out. The playlists are in the description. The next game on the release schedule is the sixth DLC for 2017's Destiny 2. The Witch Queen. Destiny 2 is a mythic science fiction first person shooter that brings players to Savanthoon's throne world. Requiring the base Destiny 2 game to play, it will come to the last gen, current gen, and PC on February 22nd. Exploring this throne world, players will be able to craft a new weapon type, the glaive, and further customize themselves with weapons and accessories, allowing them to unleash deadly new attacks and combos in the game. The Witch Queen obviously adds more missions, PvE locations, PvP maps, and a new raid. There will also be four new content seasons attached to the game for the DLC. If you haven't picked up Destiny 2 in a long time, you may want to see what this game is about since it's the first expansion for the game since November 2020's Beyond Light. And this DLC is related to the original Destiny games DLC, The Taken King, which has been a fan favorite DLC, so you know some 
gonna pop off. Hopefully it lives up to the player base's hype. Now we close out the month with good old Elden Ring. This game is arguably the biggest video game release of the year, if not at least the most hyped release of the year. And it's the perfect game to close out a month of huge releases. It will be coming to last gen, current gen consoles and PC on February 25th. Elden Ring is an action role playing game that puts players in the fantasy world of the lands between, where they must collect corrupted shards to forge a ring to become the Elden Lord. This is coming from developers from software who are makers of the hugely popular Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro video games. But they've also tapped famous fantasy author George R. R. Martin of A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones fame to develop the setting of the game. So literally prepare for the end of this month. Elden Ring is going to take over the internet at the end of February and honestly probably all through spring. From software's previous games are those huge sellers so I can just imagine this taking off for a good chunk of the year. And like those other games it will be so hard. So hard. It will be so hard. So get ready. <laughs> All right, that is February's top 10 video game releases. We got a insanely stacked month for video games. So finish whatever games you're playing so you can make room for these giant behemoths that are coming our way. And let me know in the comments what you game, what that. And let me know in the comments what games you are looking the most forward to in February, what games I didn't include that you are looking forward to, and what games you just wish weren't coming out. And I'll see you in a couple of days for another video. It's a top 10. Bye y'all, bye.